We are very aware that we are running very behind and we are the last thing standing between you and some cocktails. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Honorable Honorable Soraya Hakuzia Murray, um, who is our Deputy Governor for the National Bank of Rwanda, who will be giving um, this event's closing keynote. A warm round of applause for everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Bemi and the CMU team. It's really been a very long but great day. And I was going to say that probably do we need all the speeches, but, but I think after, you know, having seen these teams that have been working tirelessly uh, to be able to compete but propose solutions, it's only um, fitting that, that we really uh, so, sort of not um, underestimate the work that has gone in and say, you know what, we want to go to the cocktail. But I wanted to take this time to share a few words on what this uh, first ever CMU entrepreneurship uh, forum means. Um, and, and, and really, first of all, all protocols observed, um, wanted to really, one, convey the congratulations to the CMU Africa uh, management leadership uh, director, executive director for such a successful forum. It's really my pleasure and honor to officiate the closing of this uh, forum, uh, which has brought together like-minded partners to exchange opinions and address issues still hindering the success of African entrepreneurs. But the forum was not only about addressing issues. It also offered avenues of opportunities uh, for African entrepreneurs, for all partners in the African entrepreneurship ecosystem to flourish as well as forge connections that will lead to business success. And I don't want to deal too much in the, to this forum's themes. We've had sessions that did just that, but wanted first and foremost um, to thank the teams that have competed in addressing these global challenges. Um, it was um, an undertaking, and as uh, the different judges have said, these are really challenges that all organizations, all leaders are grappling with. But it's good to see that the young generations of Africans have a great understanding of the issues at hand, are willing to take on those challenges. And as um, stakeholders being government, um, financial industry, academia, business advisors, it is really our duty to make sure that we support them as much as possible. And like the saying goes, when creative minds come together, they can make the impossible possible and the ordinary extraordinary. And the mere fact that you thought a CMU Africa of birthing an annual entrepreneurship forum, this is proof enough that Rwanda, but also Africa, is hungry to grow this entrepreneurship space. And with such zeal, rest assured that we will find solutions within ourselves given the networks that we create, the knowledge that we exchange and share. The CMU Africa Entrepreneurship 2022 could not have come at a better time. We are currently trying to mitigate challenges that were brought about at the COVID-19 pandemic. But through that, when we thought we were out of the wood, external shocks and conflicts continue to affect the economy, and therefore the entrepreneurship ecosystem. And the fact that the world is currently grappling with the cost of living crisis, where inflation is reducing purchasing power of households, where financing is becoming more costly, that's a situation that can seem very daunting for entrepreneurs. And connecting Africa's entrepreneurship ecosystem Indeed, the success of entrepreneurship is not dependent solely on one entrepreneur or entrepreneurs. It depends on the creation and development of strong entrepreneurial ecosystem that are responsive to the needs of the entrepreneurs and of which collaboration and partnership are key pillars to building such ecosystems. 
When Silicon Valley started as an ecosystem, it was forged by individuals who were working at different semiconductor companies mainly, like-minded people who gravitated into groups and frequently founded new companies. Their shared values and a visionary goal to promote the growth of the computer chip industry in Northern California. But the bonds between all these specialists grew and solidified, and this self-supporting system would ultimately evolve into one of the most powerful economic engines in the United States. So one could wonder, how does this relate to Rwanda, and how does this relate to Africa? I would give two examples, two brilliant ideas from Rwandan entrepreneurs, the first being the AC Group. Their disruptive innovation in the transport space has changed not only the transport landscape to smart transport solutions, like the tap and go that we know uh, in public transformation here in, transportation here in Kigali, but this has now expanded to cities across Africa, such as Yaounde or Accra. The second example is the one of Yvette Ishimwe, who's the founder and CEO of Iriba Water Group, a social enterprise that provides innovating drinking water solutions. She's not only on a mission to transform Rwanda and make sure that people in the rural area have access to clean water, but she wants to expand and scale that innovative solutions to the whole continent. And there are many, many more examples in our country and in Africa which give us confidence about not only the potential of our young people to innovate, to solve our society's problems, but also to make profits and be able to scale internationally. And the deliberate efforts of our country to build a conducive business environment, but also to equip our youth with technical skills needed to succeed in their entrepreneurial journey, but most importantly, to nurture the mindset that drives their innovation, it's what ultimately guarantees that we will have a sustainable entrepreneurship ecosystem in Africa. And here I'm insisting on mindset because we all know that there's an easy dream of becoming rich and famous overnight that's sold to us through different medias, but there might be misconception that becoming an entrepreneur is easy. And once you've hit that first successful deal, that first million dollars, you've made it. But that could not be further from the truth. It is a hard, lonely work behind the scenes. It is the doubts, failures, knocking on hundreds of doors for support that are an, an, the unavoidable part of the entrepreneurship journey. But I do believe the students here, the aspiring entrepreneurs, have the required resilience in them to walk that journey. And so building an ecosystem that facilitates collaboration and co-creation of opportunities should also foster an ecosystem of shared values, a resilient mindset, which is a bedrock for supporting startup initiatives within our local communities. Business advisory partners, early seed investors, venture capitalists, give us the best of their worlds when as a continent we continue to create a startup culture that embraces risk, that adopts the failing fast and mentorship mantra which in turn will stimulate a supportive ecosystem of entrepreneurs from the bottom up. And I will end with some statistic on the fintech industry, and I'm sorry that I have to wear my banker's hat, uh, but in one year, of the, the 5,200 technology startup companies that were created in Africa, close to 50% of them are fintechs. And according to McKinsey, their revenues today are estimated at $6 billion, but in three years, in 2025, those revenues will grow to as much as $230 billion. That's an exponential growth, but it also shows the opportunities that we have for technology, technology startups, but also the fintech industry in particular. So the solutions that African fintechs are bringing on the market allow more people to have access to financial services, 
We've seen the example of a solution trying to address access for insurers for farmers. But fintechs also provide microloan solutions, cheaper financial transactions, and the social benefits are immense, not to mention the economic benefits for entrepreneurs, which are equally important. And the National Bank of Rwanda, by setting up a regulatory sandbox where innovate, innovators can test their products in a regulated environment, has recognized the growing importance of innovations in the finance space and which we know young people, such as CMU graduates, are part of. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we remain committed to working with all key stakeholders in the country to foster entrepreneurship, innovation, by opening new doors to aspiring entrepreneurs. So let me once again thank CMU Africa for organizing this entrepreneurship forum. I wish all partners building sustainable ecosystems to thrive in spite of global economic challenges, to keep the momentum in bringing the market's products, services, which contribute to the prosperity and well-being of all Africans. So I thank you all. Roland is yelling, let us out. Okay, so um, thank you very much. Not very much can be said following those amazing words by the Deputy Governor. I just wanna once more thank all the students who flew in during exam period for joining us. I wanna thank all the thousands of volunteers who made this happen. I wanna thank our judges and coaches. And finally, I wanna thank you in the audience for being with us all day today, contributing, asking great questions, our panelists, our speakers. We couldn't have done this without you. And we're looking forward to this being the start of many great, um, many great forums and discussions as we as CMU and all our partners continue continue to work on connecting Africa's entrepreneurship ecosystem. And with this being said, the forum is officially over and now we can go celebrate at the cocktail reception. Thank you again and have a good night, everyone.